In today's project, I'm going to be moving a leg vise from my 2x4 workbench over to my outfeed assembly table. Now, the reason for that is this 2x4 plywood workbench, which was one of the first things that I built when I built the shop, um, that's coming out. I need the workspace, but I don't want to lose my leg vise. Jay Bates made this leg vise. He did a video on that, and then we collaborated together and did a video on installing it here. But since I'm taking this bench out, I still want to have access to it and still use it in the shop. So the only other place that I could find to install it is over on the outfit assembly table. Now the corner here is about the best place that, um, that I can find to use it, but it's a little bit too long. The bench is a little bit higher, so I need to cut some of this off. So I just flip it over. I'm just gonna mark the bottom side where I'm actually gonna cut, uh, you know, trim it up. And I just take it over to the miter saw and just trim it up that way. But I need to cut off a little bit more than just where that line is. Um, because of the floor being un uneven, as the vise travels, it will start to sag a little bit. And so the floor will interfere with the traveling of the vise once it comes out. So uh, it's about a half inch off the ground, which is not a big deal. So the first thing I need to do as far as installing it here is marking the whole location where this is going to go so i just you know mark it with a pencil and eyeball my center point to where i'm going to be drilling this out with a forstner bit but now notice this is three quarter inch plywood keep that in mind i'll come back to that now, i'm not going to go all the way through here because i'll i'll have tear out on the other side i go far enough where i feel the point of that forstner bit then i go around the other side and drill back through and that just gives me a nice clean cut so now I can take the screw assembly and test it and I'm I don't have the chop I guess you could say on in this particular scene I'm just getting the screw assembly in place to where I can install it with some screws so I did all that then I had to take everything off again because the leg was just bowing too much so I need to beef it up so I went back and found a 2x4 cleaned it up drilled the hole and now I'm installing it with part of that screw assembly already in place to make it easier. I'm just going to clamp it here and I think I'm going to drill like, I don't know, six, yeah, I think six screws or six, yeah, I drill six holes, install six screws and just install it two by four that way. I'm not really worried about all the holes in this leg because if I decide to move the vise later on, I can just replace this one side of the leg on my outfit assembly table and it's not a big deal. Okay, so now that I've got all that done, you can, if you go back and look at that other scene, um, the leather is already on. So I'm kind of backtracking here, but I wanted to explain this. Um, this is contact cement, and this is really good stuff for the leather installation because it really holds it in place really well. I let it set up for like 20 to 30 minutes and then put the leather on. And then once I get the vise installed back into place, I can clamp this thing overnight and the leather's good and cured and it's on there. So this provides a lot more holding power, clamping power, if you will, and it just works really well. Now I can put everything back together, install the vise, put the screw assembly in there, uh, install the plate around the hub and call this thing good, except I've got a couple more things going on down toward the bottom of this vise. So once I get the plate installed back in there, I can move on down to the lower part of this vise. Now, this what I'm what I'm doing here is what I call a guide. I'm not really sure what the proper name is, but when you tighten this vise down and you're clamping, it kind of wants to go clockwise on you. And so this just provides a, a stop, if you will. It just kind of keeps it from twisting clockwise. And I'm talking about the, the full leg vise wanting to twist on you. And so this keeps it in place. And it's just really simple. Two pieces of wood, nothing to it. Now, for the bottom of the vise, here I'm making a wedge. In the previous setup, I just used a piece of scrap 2x4. And what this is for is to keep the vise from racking. So Jay and Wayne Brown both have the same setup. They both use a wedge. I've yet to make one for mine, so I decided to go ahead and do it uh, when I move the vise over. So that's what I'm doing here. The part that I'm planing here will attach to the uh, outfit assembly table and the wedge, they're both gonna connect together with a sliding dovetail. And that's what I'm getting ready to make here. But first I wanna just tell you about the table that I'm working on and the router lift. So the outfit assembly table is my design. I have plans for this. There's a link down in the description of this video where you can find those plans. 
And then also the router lift that I'm using is incorporated into my table, and that's Jay's router lift. So I have a standalone plan for the table, and I also have a bundle plan for the router lift and the table. If you don't know anything about the table, I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video if you're watching on desktop, and you can watch those playlists. Uh, and I'll also leave a link down in the description in case you don't see that playlist on mobile. But right here, I'm getting ready to cut the what would call what would be the uh, socket in a regular dovetail, um, but this is going to be the full length of the wedge, and so it's going to be a dovetail shape. And as you can see there, um, it's going to go from one end to the other. And so on the other piece that I'm going to be cutting, I'm going to be creating the mate for this. So it's going to create a sliding dovetail, and that way this thing will stay attached to the table. I won't lose it. Um, and I can operate it with my foot and it'll be very it'll be very convenient so here I'm making the first cut on what would be on the table and as you can see um, this piece here the outer parts of that piece will come off I'm just keeping those on for support as I sneak up on this center piece here that center piece has got to be the right size to fit into the groove or the dovetail slot on the wedge itself so I'm sneaking up on the center piece here and then once I find that, I'll, I'll line it up just by holding it, up, holding it up to each other. And then once I find that, I can cut off the outer pieces of this. It'll all make sense here in just a few minutes. But sneaking up on it is the, is the key here. Because if you go too far, then you're going to create a very loose sliding dovetail. And if you don't go far enough, you're going to have some problems where it sticks. And the wood is going to expand and contract. And it's just going to be really hard to move it. So now that I've found that, I can take the edge pieces off. As you see here, I'm cutting all the rest of it off now. So it's just going to be one tail. It's the tail part of the dovetail on that piece of wood. Now, some of you might say, well, if you step on that, it's going to break. And that's possible, but it's just like anything else in my shop. Once I get used to it, I kind of know it's there. So now all I have to do is just install this to the lower shelf there and it's ready to use so now I don't have to keep up with a scrap piece of 2 by 4 or have a wedge laying around with the possibility of losing it now I can just slide it back and forth with my foot and it's very convenient if you want more details on this be sure to check out the website article down in the description there's a link that you can follow to my website and read more about this project there you will find plans for this outfeed table and also there's a combo or a bundle for the outfeed table and Jay's router lift together. So be sure and check that out. Please share this with your friends and family. Uh, it really helps me out when you guys share. And I always appreciate you guys watching and being here. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.